Hi there, thank you for coming back for the next gripping instalment of how to press your jacket. Um, I hope you're all walking around with nice creases in your trouser legs. Um, we have a jacket here, it's actually my old jacket. Um, it's obviously been pressed in its, when it was made, but it's creased and crumpled and there's no shape in the sleeves and all the rest of it. So we're going to smarten it all up and we'll show you how it's done. Right. Here again is your nice sleeve board, which is what we're going to use to press just about every part of the jacket. The first thing we want to do is to put some life into the sleeves, and you can see this is just hanging shapeless, alright, which is pretty normal. You'll often get on lighter weight fabrics a lot of creases in here. So, like we did with the trousers, let's take all the creases out before we put the shape back in. Alright, so what we do is we lay the coat to the side. Pull the sleeve on there, nice and flat. You don't have to go mad, but gently press it without putting hard pressing either side. You're taking the pieces out. With a good iron like this, you can often do that sort of thing. And that will take the creases out, okay? Do that on both of them. If it's really stubborn, you can put them on there, but all that's doing is getting the creases out of it, okay? Sometimes you'll get them a little higher up here, and if you struggle, then this is where you use your towel. Just get a towel folded over, put your hand down into your sleeve, and that's that area that's hard to get to. As I said with the trousers, if you're using a navy material or something a bit finer, use your cotton or linen to just protect the cloth from shining. Um, no doubt people will ask, but this is on quite a high heat. I'd say it's about 75%, so it's not as, as hot as cotton, but it's pretty high for wool. So, we've got two sleeves. We've got no creases in them, but the sleeves are absolutely shapeless. So, get your sleeve board. The narrow end. Put your jacket on, make sure it's all nice and flat. And first of all, get the crown on the curve at the top and the front of the sleeve down there. Position the sleeve so it's laying nice and smooth. Okay, with a little bit of tension, shape it right on the edge of that lip. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're only going to press half of the sleeve and then we'll come back. So, we shape. A little bit of steam. Now what I'm doing, I've got the iron on the sleeve and the crown, but I'm not pressing this edge. I'm steaming it and just rolling it with my fingers like that. Because we want a nice curvature in the sleeve, but we don't want a hard press line. So don't overdo it, okay? Again, just have a good look at that crown. A little bit of a roll there. Make sure you get the steam out of it. Then get the jacket and the whole thing, pull it forward, pull your sleeve nice and clean, place that nice and neatly there, and then do the rest. With the pressure on the crown, you want that to be quite flat. Shake down the sleeve. But don't actually go putting creases in it. Alright, now then, I don't know how clear that is to you, but you can see now that sleeve is beautiful and flat and crisp, but it hasn't actually got a crease in there. Alright, you see if you open it, there's no crease. You'll notice. Um, Prince Charles sometimes, he has a crease down there, which is probably because he has military valets, or military trained valets, pressing his suits. And in the military, they do like a crease there. All right, but we're civilians, so we don't have them. But if you look at that sleeve, and look at that sleeve, yeah, this is just hanging loose. There's no comparison. So we do the same, narrow end. Okay, put that on there. 
and shape that crown just over that lip. Okay. Shape that. Again, don't put a crease in it. flat, reshape the back to it. Let the steam out of it. And there you go. You can see, I hope, it just presents the whole sleeve beautifully. There's no creases and it's nice and crisp. Alright, so that's the sleeves out of the way. They will look after themselves. Now then, because this has obviously been made, the main fundamentals of the pressing has been done. So we have to just really go around the body now, get the creases out. And then the very important bit at the end is setting the collar and the pelts so we have this nice roll. But to go around the body, it's very easy. <clears throat> I prefer thin end at the top. Get your first part of the forepart on. Okay. Obviously, if it's a shiny material, lightweight, especially navy blues, you must use your pressing cloth, okay? Which is not awkward, you just literally use it like that, all right? But we don't need to on this fabric. So, we'll work our way around, a little bit of steam. We don't have to go mad because you're just crisping the garment up. It's, it's been made, it's been underpressed, all right? We'll just work our way around it. Only do the full part, don't do behind the lapels as yet, because we'll be doing that in a moment. Come around to the chest area, obviously make sure there's nothing in your pockets. You can position all your flaps, make sure they're all nice and neat and flat again, because they have a tendency to get caught up. <clears throat> and you'll notice there's a little bit of steam, but there's a lot of dry iron. We want to crisp things up. All right. Making sure everything's nice and flat. If you can do this to your suits, give them a press regularly. Give them a good brushing regularly. Don't wear them too often. Just rotate them around. They will last for years, they really will. And they'll always look good. Okay, set underneath your flap. Put the side vent over there. And then just bake that off. The reality of it is, the garment is cut to be shaped. So you can't press it all flat, but that's the beauty of this. We can work around each of the curves. Onto the back, the back shoulder in there, nice and cleanly down. Okay. Now I am going a little bit quicker than normal because uploading videos onto YouTube takes forever. There's nothing more annoying that you upload something, it says it's too long and we have to redo it again and all the rest of it. So I'm sure you can get the gist of what I'm doing. What I like to do is work from one fore part to the centre back seam, then I take it off, I change the sides, and I start going the opposite direction. Okay, so same again, not behind the lapel, just the fore part. A little bit of steam in there. Don't be afraid to. The beauty of what I said about a sturdy table and the sleeve board being steady is I'm always swinging into it and putting weight into it okay because when these go to your usual uh, dry cleaners they have a big machine which just clunks down and locks them 
And uh, if they're used properly, they're all right, but you can't be doing it this way, to be honest. <coughs> all right, so again, we're just whizzing right round, setting behind the side rinse there. Make sure it's clean, clean it over. And quickly and knit it back to our centre back seat. Now then, we've set the sleeves, we've been around the body, but all the lapels in this top area is unshaped. Alright? So what I like to do, <coughs> I like to get this pad which is made of the towel that we spoke about. Put that on. Thick end. Then what you can do is you can lay this on there, shape that nicely, get your roll position where you want it to be. Okay? And you can just set this collar nicely. What we don't want to do, well it's up to you, what I don't want you to do, is to crease the sharp edge down there. I actually want to do the opposite. I flip that open generally and I put heat behind there, not steam. Okay, get it nicely baked because what you're doing is you're baking and shrinking the back of the lapel. And that, because of the way you sit it, will start to want to give us that nice curve. Alright, you can just touch it very gently if you want to firm it down a little bit. But the look that we're going for is that soft roll through the top button. Okay? It's, not, it's the case of you don't overdo it. If you're wearing a suit that's being made by somebody that has a very starchy, stiff lapel that's fine it's up to you you can keep that you can just follow it and press it but I personally would turn it behind and press it out like this and get the horrible thick hard line out of there all right and then you can get it over your pad look how it's rolling through get the feel of that and just press that top collar and just gently smooth the edges, rolling it back and forth to shrink it behind. Okay. Let me have it again. Look, it's just it's lovely and soft. You don't want to be heavy-handed with anything. Okay. Now this area often gets a few creases in it with fullness. So this is where your pad again is fantastic. You can put your hand behind it. All right, and you can put it right in there. Okay, and any creases you put up can be smartly taken out. <coughs> Move it around the other side. Same again. And any other parts you want to shape, you can just literally put on your hand. Okay. Now. That is quite likely done, but to be honest, if it's made properly, that's all you want to be doing. Because you want a soft roll, a soft sleeve, everything relaxed, no hard edges in the garment at all. So this is quite an old jacket. So. Put it on. I don't know how clear it will look. But you'll see, especially from the, uh, from the design view. How oh, nice those lapels look. Can you see that lovely soft look there? Alright, the sleeves aren't creased but the whole thing is nice and relaxed and clean looking. And that is what you want to be trying to achieve. Alright, so I hope that helped. Any important questions get in touch but otherwise it's practice makes perfect. So um, thank you for watching. Bye bye.